So uh, for the start of the next uh, session, I would um, suggest that we go first with two presentations and then make a short break for, I don't know, about some 10 minutes for a cigarette, tea, coffee, and then come back with the, with the other three so that it wouldn't be like too much information in, in, in just like at, at one point. Uh, so I would invite uh, to join uh, for for joining me here uh, Adam Haves and Adam uh, uh, Kucharski and Diana Chaloski, and we'll start first with uh, the presentation on the extraterritorial ministry of culture. So, the three of you, please join me. Doctor Haves, can. صباح الخير وشكرا انكم دعوتونا النهارده في سكوبيا في مقدونيا احب اعرفكم النهارده ب Thank you much for uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, we were invited to share with you uh, the minister the extraterritorial ministry of Arab culture. النهارده هنديكم مقدمه بسيطه وزميلي هنا ادم كوشارسكي هيقوم بالترجمه. Today we're we're going to have a, a rather brief introductory presentation about the ministry. Uh, I'll be translating uh, for the deputy minister uh, to begin and we'll be going back and forth uh, discussing and sharing the ministry with you. Um قبل ما نبدا احب اعرف نفسي وزميلي بيكم انا ادهم حافظ uh, before we begin, we'll just introduce who we are. Uh, so, uh, right now, uh, Dr. Hafiz is the uh, Deputy Minister of uh, uh, He served EDMAC's Deputy Minister position since its inception three years ago in 2018. Perfect. Uh, he's currently in charge of international policy and strategy. He sits on the curatorial board of the ministry. And he's engaged in overseeing the establishment of uh, new offices in uh, different regions. Uh, Dr. Hafiz previously served as CEO of the Art Arab Art Corporation, uh, overseeing the purchase and distribution of major Arab art collections, notably in Guggenheim, New York. And the Louvre in Paris. He's the author uh, of the uh, best selling Petrol Art, uh, which studies the rise and fall of artistic empires in the Arabian Gulf region. Uh, now, I am Adam Kuharski. Um, I'm Deputy Director of ETMAC. I have been with the ministry since its inception in 2018. Uh, I work on the internal and external communications of the ministry. Um, I also, I, previously I served with the Aga Khan Foundation as their director of communications. And uh, I'm the author of the book Jane Jacobs in Aleppo, uh, Making Living Neighborhoods in Dead Cities. So these are, these are our backgrounds. Uh, we, we have served the ministry from, uh, from its creation. And uh, we want to share today with you what it is that we do. Um, I think it's because there's only probably two people in the audience who speak Arabic. Even though Arabic is the official uh, language of the ministry, I'm going to shift um, to English. I'd like us to look at the map, if you could go to the next slide, please. So, um, what is ETMAC, the Extraterritorial Ministry of Arab Culture? When it was established in a haste to meet the challenge of an extraordinary moment in the history of the Arab world, namely the post-Arab Spring period and the subsequent collapse and hollowing out of several Arab states. We looked at the cultural situation that was in transition with all the displacement, all the war-struck uh, regions, and we recognized that there is a need to continue supporting the contemporary arts and culture and its preservation. As we can look here at the map, this is the map of the current situation today in the year 2021. And we see uh, several countries. We have um, five categories of destruction that would help you understand this map. There's destroyed institutions, imprisoned artists, war, embargo, censorship and propaganda, and finally exiled and migrating artists. When we look at the map here, we see that um, the situation in, in Egypt, for example, there's a lot of attacks that continued uh, since 2018 until now on the downtown art scene. Several venues shut down, assets frozen. We look in the situation in Syria and we see how war continued to shatter down the infrastructure of the city, but also the institutional reality of those working in contemporary artistic practices. 
the exiled artists and art students could not instantly form syndicates or companies in the countries that they immigrated to, which continued to be a condition that shapes uh, their lives abroad as artists and art uh, students and practitioners. Iraq, uh, post the Kurdistan independence, uh, as everybody knows, there was the burning down of the Baghdad Library, there was the imprisonment of two of the most world-renowned artists, Mohammed Baghdadi and Marwa Qabil, who's still in prison for 10 years almost. And the military has moved into the opera house, as you know, to run the new Nasserist propagandist operas. We look at the situation in Yemen, post the division, and then also in Palestine, the struggle continues really since 1948, with displaced paperless citizens who still struggle to form companies, but also on the level of higher institutions, for instance, the Palestinian Museum, since the embargo, they still are unable to tour a lot of their collections. Thank you, Doctor. So it's in this context that the ministry was created, a very unique institution, the first of its kind, a ministry that is extraterritorial. So it differs from traditional ministries in that it is not connected to a single nation state, but in fact represents several. And it functions entirely, as we'll see in one of our later slides, entirely outside of the existing territories of these nations in response to the humanitarian and institutional crises that have made artistic expression and administration of culture untenable. Um, so I wanted to share kind of the mission and vision of the ministry, what it is that, that we do. Uh, our, our focus is serving as a novel, kind of new kind of institution for displaced cultural and artistic practice around the world, the Arab community of Arab artists that have left their home countries, these five countries, and are trying to practice and administer art uh, in, you know, in their adopted uh, countries, to safeguard Arab contemporary arts, protect at-risk Arab citizen artists, and counteract the damage done by war, unrest, authoritarianism, and displacement. Now, what I think is remarkable about the ministry is our vision, you know, which, which comes from this, this, uh, from this mission, it's what we're working towards. It's, it's a, a vision of an Arab Middle East where cultural and artistic institutions survive political instability and are crucial to their home country's rebuilding, reform, and efflorescence. In, in a way, you could say that we will have achieved our vision when we finally disband the ministry. Our vision is for this ministry not to have to exist in the future. So just to, again, we are a, still a bureaucracy, even though we're extraterritorial, so I'll take you quickly through the org chart, which I think will help you understand what it is concretely that we do. Uh, Dr. Hafez represents the office of the minister, and I'm with Communications and Publications, which uh, you know, helps to communicate our, our mission and, and what we do, and I report directly to uh, the minister. However, the bulk of the work of the ministry occurs within these verticals. So one, we have policy advisory. This is actually creating cultural policies for countries if and when they are ready to rebuild and reconstruct these administrative and funding apparatuses. A legal defense office and anti-censorship. This is actually coming concretely to the aid of artists and, and cultural purveyors who have fallen afoul of censorship laws or, or, or uh, other legal challenges in their home countries or in their adopted countries. A repatriation advisory office. This is an office where, uh, that seeks to assist those uh, artists who are looking to relocate and eventually, ideally, repatriate them back uh, to their home countries to assist in the rebuilding uh, of the kind of cultural landscapes. Collective bargaining and artist advocacy. This is a bit controversial, but we've been very deliberate about keeping the notion of collective bargaining. We heard the trade union, I think, of, uh, in, in Skopje, which was of particular interest to us. We believe in collective bargaining for Arab artists in their adopted countries. It is not enough simply to, uh, to gain asylum or to have a place to stay. Additional resources are needed, and we believe there's strength in numbers. There's, there's an opportunity for collective bargaining. Archives and documentation. We have seen the unprecedented destruction of the artistic patrimony, contemporary artistic patrimony of these countries. Uh, we work to combat that. And finally, strategic partnerships, working with funding entities, with international aid organizations, and with other civil society organizations around the world to strengthen our network and to uh, enable us 
to function. And finally, an administrative and, and financial uh, infrastructure that you would find really in, in any ministry, but keeps us running day to day. Doctor. So like my colleague here um, explained to you, and as it's obvious from this map right um, on the screen, that we do not work in the Middle East. This is, uh, this is a ministry that when it was conceived, it became clear to the founding committee that the decentralization of its offices is crucial to its mission and also the, the vision and the continuity of it. And these cities that you see on the map were chosen based on international bids, but also based on pre-existing Arab diasporas and networks. We, uh, through this network, we are able to serve a community of Arab artists that exist and work globally, but also this is a map that reflects a reality of how artistic and culture production operates in our world. We look at cities, for example, such as Berlin, the vibrant performance art scene in Berlin allowed us to open our agency, the Arab Performance Agency. We look at cities like New York, with the Lincoln Center having the largest performance library in the world. They immediately wanted to partner up with our project Archive, which is a project that collects and documents and digitizes contemporary Arab performance and visual arts documents. We look at two cities in the Global South, Rio and Johannesburg. These are cities that have witnessed earlier immigration of um, Arab uh, intellectuals and businessmen. This, is, this goes back to 50 and 60 years ago. And this is the wealthier um, sector of, uh, of our philanthropic community that continues to support us. And it's also important for us to keep a relation to the Global South in order to destabilize the map that we have been used to in the Middle East, which is the Middle East and the nearer West. We look at cities such as Sydney, um, which mainly runs our hideout program, which is a program for immediate extraction and uh, repatriation of artists, citizens at risk. And finally, um, last but not least, of course, Marseille and Stockholm continue to support, as most of you here know, the ministry since several years. Yeah, maybe we can um, go to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to uh, put these um, big promises on the screen, these preserving, preempting, preparing, defending, disseminating, documenting. And it sounds just like any big six words a ministry um, in our countries uh, of origin would have. But when it comes to ETMAC, these are uh, words that stem from our reality. During the frantic years of the late 2010s, ETMAC has been involved in preserving modern Arab cultural production, collectively bargaining for the rights of Arab uh, diaspora artists, like um, my colleague just explained. We have been raising funds for performance and exhibitions. We have been drafting cultural policy agreements to support the reconstruction of Arab national institutions, hopefully, when we are able to move back home. A group of high-profile cultural operators came together in 2018, and they formed the committee that is the founding committee that gave birth to ETMAC, to the ministry. And the motive was to, while we are challenged by the current troubled and troubling situation back home, to be able to continue working. And working here does not mean getting just the basic rights when you are displaced as an artist, but also immediately being able to be plugged into an artistic scene, which, as you know, is something that even if you decide to move to a city just because you would like to, it's still much harder to play a part in the scene, let alone when you are forced to leave your home and you do not maybe know the language even if where you are uh, starting a new career or you don't know the legal conditions. So one of the main things that ETMAC does is not just helping in this repatriation, but also creating these legal conditions for these artists to be able to form syndicates, trade unions, companies, NGOs, and we give them legal advice um, on these um, premises. The core interest, as you may understand, is to guarantee that these conditions would allow the artists to continue to flourish in these um, new cities that become their homes on their own terms and conditions. So it is to guarantee some degree of independence to these artists outside of agendas of existing institutions. So for, we all are familiar, for instance, with the case of the Syrian artists who have um, been actively part of the performance scene in Berlin, but how most of their work is shaped by agendas of funding organizations in Germany rather than by their own agendas and their own interests. So ETMAC comes in to rupture these power dynamics by providing more independence to these artists and to allow them to work on their own terms and conditions. Uh, and I would like here maybe to move to our 10-year strategic plan and let my colleague give you a presentation briefly on that. I'll go quick, don't worry. We depart from a number of strategic goals which inform our key initiatives and individual country strategies. Now, those strategic goals I think will make sense given what we've told you here today. We foremost are concerned with trusteeship, 
That's the responsible preservation and increased awareness of Arab artistic and, and cultural, uh, uh, cultural value. Advocacy, which is reassertion of Arab artistic autonomy and integrity. And uh, I think it gets to the question of precarity, which we've heard discussed in a number of the presentations. Uh, and finally, governance. This is very critical. It's not purely looking at artists, but also looking at artistic institutions and cultural institutions in these countries, supporting the reconstruction of national cultural and artistic policies and legislation post-crisis. So, the things that we've focused on in this 10-year plan, it's 2018 to 2028, securing an operating budget. We need resources to run and we don't draw on the uh, national finances of our portfolio countries. So we have to work extra hard to generate the resources we need. Uh, we do that through partnerships with IFIs, development donors, and other philanthropic sources. We recruit talent, not just to, to, make, the, to make ETMAC work, but also in the future to create sort of the next generation of cultural administrators and, and ministerial uh, employees that will serve these respective countries if and when they are able to reconstruct, uh, kind of reconstruct their, their cultural um, ecosystems, in a sense. Uh, scaling up, we award artist resource packages to individual artists to ensure, to kind of combat this precarity and ensure that they uh, have the resources and the support to continue to, to uh, pursue their art. Uh, we are looking to expand the Kilma Publishing House into a variety of different languages and uh, new media. Uh, establishing rapid response teams, this will be the first time that we actually start moving into some of these countries that we represent. Uh, in order to more quickly respond to crises as they arise, whether it's cataloging or recovering artistic production, or facilitating the migration and asylum of artists who are under particular threat. And then finally, expanding our footprint. Uh, I want to thank Bilian and Violetta for bringing us here to discuss opening a Balkan office uh, based here at Kino Cultura, and we look forward to broadening that discussion uh, in what follows. And I think you know, each country has a unique strategy that, that we pursue. Some of them, our, uh, our efforts are geared towards rescuing, okay, actually trying to stop the damage and, and save what can be saved. But in some countries, we're shifting more towards rebuilding and refining, actually building policy and creating legislative and policy bases for the, the reconstruction of respective ministries of culture and arts that respond, that, that are able to go beyond the old bureaucracies and actually innovate something new. Uh, doctor. So um, to conclude, I'd like to invite you to get involved with us. And as you see, there are several ways you could uh, support ETMAC. You could uh, contact us or contact one of the local offices in your cities and get involved. And you can know um, how to get involved there. You will receive packages uh, by mail or print. You could also attend one of our events, or if you are um, a director of an institution and you'd like to host one of our events, we'd be very happy to discuss collaborative possibilities. You could sponsor an Arab artist, and we have um, catalogs available outside during the coffee break where you will see um, which artists uh, from the diaspora we're supporting currently. You could buy an artwork, you could uh, pay for work hours or studio hours for some of our artists. Uh, you could host one of the displaced artists in the interim periods until they found um, their housing. You could connect uh, with these artists directly, and there are several ways for curators uh, that we're happy to um, elaborate also later during the coffee break. Or contribute to our archives if you've ever hosted an Arab event, whether an exhibition or a performance um, in one of your institutions. We would be very glad to get a copy of um, the documentations and submit it to our archives. Uh, so please let us know if you have documents to share. And I will leave uh, my colleague to explain to you more about the donor circle. Yeah, I'd, I'd be remiss if we didn't discuss uh, fundraising. Uh, we have a very prestigious donor circle in which we call on global community of art lovers, art connoisseurs, those who have an interest in the Arab world and the art world more generally, to contribute to the work that we do, whether it's through in-kind contributions, direct support of artists, or contributing to our operational budget. I'm happy to discuss the many perks that come with being a part of the donor circle uh, during the coffee break. أشكركم لاستماعكم ونتمنى نشوفكم قريب في البلاد اللي احنا بنمثلها. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention, your kind attention. And we uh, look forward to discussing further.
Thank you, Adam and Adam, for this interesting future-based fiction. Um, so I would invite you, we can take, I don't know, two, three short questions and then move on with the next presentation. Yes? Thank you very much. I really liked what you say about helping the artists keeping uh, their own independence and uh, sticking to their own agenda. Can you envisage or have you had an experience of a funding offer you had to refuse in order to keep your own agenda? So do you want the answer from 2021 or from 2012? <laughs> so from 2012, yes, I did have to refuse um, one particular fund. Where the, um, where the funding came with a very direct um, score of what to be done, uh, of what a revolution is, how revolutions are represented artistically, and what is being Arab and Arabness. Like, and it was, uh, it was a European fund that came with a list of very, very clear expectations. And if they're not met, then you do not... Um, yeah, so I mean, it was one of these moments where it was very, very clear to us that these are performance scores where you are invited to perform a certain role in an international policy spectacle, and we were not interested in that yet. And, and I would add that the, the structure, the idea of this ministry is, you know, traditionally a ministry would, uh, would try and find, would argue for and barter for resources from a central national government. We're replacing those resources with donors. So the purpose of, of ETMAC would be to almost act as a buffer, to do that hard work of negotiating with donors, pushing back, uh, having a certain heft, you know, to be able to collectively bargain uh, and, and fight back against some of these the kinds of funding uh, strings uh, and, and ensure that individual artists can pursue their work without having to worry about that. So it's sort of it, it, the idea to help avoid exactly that, that, those types of conditions that burden the work currently. Excuse me. Um. Uh, I, I would like to ask something. Is it uh, just the two of you? I didn't understand how is the organization uh, structured. Like, who do you actually report to? Like, how does that work? So the, the organization that exists in 2021, uh, there was an org chart. So there is um, several departments that work together. There is a committee of artists from the cities that we are representing. This committee elects uh, the minister and it's on a four-year rotational uh, basis. And the structure that you saw, not all these offices exist in one city. So these offices and departments are displaced as well, which allows for the local communities of the artists and also the, the citizens who are displaced to take part actively in the decision-making. So there's a lot of reporting and there's a lot of meeting with, with the local uh, communities. We're, we're getting really deep into the fiction now. I'm, I'm glad. This is good. I think it's a really great that you're going to enlarge with the Biliana to the Balkans, but that I think that would fit much better your project if you would introduce, besides Global South, a local South. And I think that can be also very relevant. So, okay, keep you Global South, you, Rio, Johannesburg, Sydney, and so on, but also think about some, for example, not Mumbai and Bangalore, but some small spots in India that were really relevant now for some Palestinian projects, Freedom Theatre and so on. And us in the Balkans, we are also, I think, very local south. We are not global south. Very good. I like that. No, I agree that the Balkans is a, a local uh, south. And I mean, the, I started uh, my, 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 uh, my trip here, as I said the first day uh, during your presentation and the questions with the anecdote from my, my parents when we're, they're like, ah, Skopje. Because to, to the generation of my parents, but also to me, we grew up that, that this is part of the neighborhood. You know, There are so many half Egyptian, half Czech families, so many half Egyptian, half Polish families, and half Balkan, half Egyptian families. And so it's, it's not just that there used to be cultural diplomacy, but there are children that I grew up with who are from there and from here, that this region, to us growing up in a place like Egypt, believing in, in, in dreams that don't exist anymore, were also enfleshed and embodied realities. 
And at the same time, it's this discrepancy where you have all these uh, ideological dreams that were uh, evacuated, but then there were institutions that were constructed around these dreams. And now that they're hollow, but the, the systems exist in a way as if we are still in Arab socialism and as if we still exist within these Nasser-Titu uh, relations. And until now, it's much easier for an Egyptian to get a scholarship to go study in, in Moscow than it is to go and study in London or even in uh, Greece. Or, and it's, it's really this, this, this two worlds exist that, yes, would make me insist on, on having the office here in Kinokultura. So thank you. Okay, we can go with one more question if there's any before we move to the next presentation. No? Huh? Yes, I was thinking, we've discussed it, I think, yesterday, the notion of cultural diplomacy. And I did not hear that much about that in your presentation, whilst I think, yes, I think it's an, an excellent platform for cultural diplomacy, and you already mentioned Russia or other, you know. So what is your idea about that? That's a very good question. What is, my, what is your idea about cultural diplomacy? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think the idea behind ETMAC is let's remove a lot of the constraints that artists face and allow that diplomacy to happen organically. So my interest in running an organization like this would be less the sort of classical uh, sort of cultural diplomacy exchanging of artists and rather just creating the strongest possible community of Arab artists outside of their home countries and allow that strength, that resilience that uh, collectivity to sort of speak for itself. Um, I, I think there's value in that, it's sort of a decentralized model where we deal with the conditions of life first. And uh, you know, our belief is that if, if you can address those, then the culture will, the, the diplomacy will follow, the, the cross-pollination will follow. I mean, so I mean, main parts of what we were discussing on the screen, even though it is set in the future, are actually very real um, data that we collect or things that we actually live. Some of these projects that we also spoke about are things that already do exist. So the archive, for example, for contemporary uh, performance art, does exist, and it's a project between my organization and the library at the Lincoln Center. And when it, when it started, it was, there was this, uh, why we wanted to work with this library in particular is that the director openly said, I am not interested in doing yet another Arab project. I'm not interested in doing a revolution project. At this, at this point, if it's really about going out there and trying to save these documents, this is what it should be about. And it should not at all present itself as, look at America extending its hands to, to and to me this was, why for us it was a very crucial partnership because it was technical. It was, we can give you this space to digitize material. And that was all what we needed at the time. It was not, we can give big promises and give you know, a prestigious uh, cover page to your proposal. That, was, that wouldn't save a thing. So I think there comes a point where cultural diplomacy is challenged by a very violent reality. And this is where it just becomes obsolete, that e even if you are on both sides, you realize that it, it, it cannot work. It's, it's not a relation that can work anymore. And it's maybe there that when we were conceiving of ETMAC that we, it just, it's not a word that would even come in our discussions as we conceive of this because we are putting it into an even extra violent um, futuristic reality that is just a magnification of what already is happening now. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Adam and Adam. So uh, I suggest that we continue now with the next presentation by Jana Chalowski, who at the moment is serving as the president of uh, sociocultural space uh, Yadro that um, we also heard about a bit in the morning uh, presentation by Danilo. Uh, Jana is also one of the most important visual artists in Macedonia, researcher, curator, and cultural worker. He's also one of the co-founders together with Christina Ivanovska of Press to Exit Project Space that was mentioned as well in the morning session. So uh, Jana will tell us more about the experience of, of uh, Yadro as a new form of institution. So Jana, please. So 
Thanks, Lovejo. Thanks, Biliana, the team of Locomotiva, and everybody involved in this conference. I'm very, very happy to be here uh, with all of you. I, unfortunately, I couldn't follow the program the last two days. Uh, I did follow it uh, electronically, and I'm very happy that this is happening. It's, it's a very important subject. All of the examples, I think, that are being discussed, I believe, are very important, and each one has its own story and context and reason. And um, I'm here to present something which is a result of many years of somehow hard work and hard discussions and hard uh, negotiation and uh, good and uh, not so good moments, but uh, in any case, uh, a group effort. And um, the first slide, my presentation is not very, I think, visual, and you will see. Uh, and I will explain why also, but the first slide actually just uh, uh, gives the name of the institution and the address. Two things which I think are, uh, we, we think are naive and easy to get, but maybe are the most difficult uh, or, 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 you know, identity of, of an idea that I think at the end uh, feels very good to have. And uh, so the name of the institution is uh, Kulturno Socialen Prostor Centar Jadro. Culturally, cultural Social Space Center Yadro, and the address is uh, Albert Einstein II in center, the municipality of center, and specifically in the Debarmalo area of the city. Um, let's see what we have. So uh, the way I'm going to be speaking, obviously, in English, and the, slide like, the slides are in Macedonian. So this is somehow to compensate uh, what, I'm be, what I'll be re reading and speaking. It's not necessarily directly involved with each individual slide. So I'm going to be kind of clicking and using this uh, motion to adjust to, to somehow the dynamic of both. But um, the, the space, it's basically, um, um, it's something that, as this also slide suggests, it's uh, started specifically, or it started uh, in 2012 when Yadro was established. And Yadro is an association of the independent art scene, uh, numbering something around 50 members uh, and uh, individual organizations, NGOs, but also individual, and some are also not even uh, legal entities, but uh, but somehow research groups. So it does have a large membership. It was something that we established in 2012 with the help of a grant from the Swiss Cultural uh, Foundation, which supported networks in the region. So it was an opportunity and, uh, but the genealogy of the idea is much longer. It does have uh, roots in, the, in a small research group of the city, um, of the municipality of of the city of Skopje. So the genesis is very interesting, but we're not going to go into it at this time. I hope in some other, uh, or maybe you can ask me about it later. But uh, what I would like to say that in 2015, in March, we had an opportunity to actually arrive to some kind of concluding proposal, having talked among ourselves and also talked to the municipality of Center. As you know, Skopje has 11 of such municipalities. Center was the only one which had, at the time, and still actually until tomorrow, the only uh, mayor, mayor who was not also, who was open. He was part of, let's say, the opposition coalition and not of the, um, of the ruling party. So uh, Center, uh, municipality center became a good, uh, let's say, uh, partner to test this uh, a new idea for us, civil-public partnership, something which was not tested here, specifically not in culture, uh, something that was tested in the region, uh, most, most specifically in Croatia, and Pogon became one example which we, uh, which we strive to learn from. And also in this process, we also had a, a significant, let's say, input from our colleagues from Zagreb in the way we to organize ourselves and how to basically present and elaborate and understand what we want to achieve through the civil public partnership with center. So uh, obviously um, it's a pioneering uh, attempt. It was something that uh, had to work in concept, 
but most uh, importantly had to work politically and uh, then also socially and culturally. But it was a big giant step forward gesture that uh, was not gonna satisfy individual needs of individual organizations uh, to basically showcase uh, the production they do, but it was, and it is, still is, uh, mainly a space, a symbol of this inter cultural and multi-organizational effort on part of everyone and especially on part of the uh, developing the dialogue, not just between us and showcasing our work, but developing a social incentive with the community. And uh, that's why at the beginning, the address, it is important because it is in the part of the city, which is center, but it's also very much a community based. And, um, and it will affect this community, our presence there. It will very much uh, be something that, you know, we're gonna have to be good neighbors and work well together. And we have done some already, some things to, on the site. There is the location and this is the building. Uh, so I had, I've taken this photo just, uh, it's very recent of this morning actually, uh, just to show you what is the, physical location of it. So it's, uh, it's um, far from the ideal image we, you know, we, we had. We had a dream ses dreaming session where we kind of analyzed ideally what we would like to have in the space. But that ideal, it's, it's kind of always impossible to attain, especially when you are working with uh, and asking from the partner to provide the space and the infrastructural and the funding for, the, for running this infrastructure. So uh, it was very important for the institution to, have a, to be sited on a location and a building that belongs to the municipality, which is also clear, and, and it has a very clear, somehow legal bill with, uh, with the institutions that it has its own, uh, somehow, it's an entity that cannot be, can, it does not have complicated, somehow, uh, legal matters. So uh, this space, uh, uh, it's, it's not large, it's 150 square meters, let's say, the large uh, portion, and then there is a small office. And the idea with, uh, with the municipality is to, to have them, um, as I said, uh, provide the infrastructure and provide funding for the running of this infrastructure, which would also include the team that will run the space and that, uh, that is three people that will be somehow uh, selected through, through an open call, which is now in the plans. It has to be concluded, this portion of the plan, it's now possible to start and then conclude by the end of the year. So this team of people, whoever they are, can start working from January 1st, basically. Um, what I wanna show you, so now it's... Uh, What is very important for, for this model of institution is to, to just remember that we have, uh, and I think some of your discussions probably these two days have reflected on this, but uh, we have to, uh, while building a new model, remember what has worked or what has almost or in some way worked in the past and think how we can uh, rethink that currently for, for, for our realities for our neoliberal uh, reality, which we which we are stuck in. So we had to um, we had to reconsider this co-ownership uh, aspect, uh, this partnership with the municipality, which is uh, you know it, it's 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 people's money. It's money that we will res re re responsibly and reasonably. Um, handle and uh, proceed uh, producing with, but in the same time understand our position as a producers and effective somehow uh, uh, content maker so that uh, we will provide the programming so that it's not going to be, um, um, that, will, that not everything comes from the municipality that we have to play and to be responsible for our part. Um, so I think it's uh, on the road of the construction of this new institutional model, for me at least, to what uh, seems to be a step forward in the 
political action, it's exactly this, this pioneering uh, political undertaking of partnering something and uh, not uh, thinking, is this partner ideal, but does this partner understand ideally what we are trying to do? And this takes time, but uh, uh, also enduring this time of understanding and negotiating and advocating for uh, to, to really build a base that is uh, that is a secure ground, so we could move forward. So it's been a long and, uh, and uh, tiring process, and uh, uh, I'm very glad that it has, a, it has concluded with, with being finally registered. So the good fate, the political somehow fate on both sides, it's been met. Um, and what, uh, I'm just trying to find one note. I don't wanna miss it. Um, Yes, what is, uh, uh, this, uh, what is very important is that as we do this, we are also speaking about all other models. You cannot do something in a small uh, social, cultural, economic space like uh, Macedonia and specifically then Skopje where a lot of it is central, you know, centralized, Every, so much happens here. So you cannot be doing that without having a mirror too many other things going on, and, and, and when I say I'm, I'm mostly thinking of the institutional sector, which is uh, uh, institutional cultural sector, which is supported by the Ministry of Culture, and it's controlled by the Ministry of Culture in the large part by effectively by the by its financing and by uh, even by its content. So. Uh, we and then you, we cannot also not reflect on other more private project-based models which we are accustomed to and have existed and have existed for some time. So this, what we try to, to actually somehow uh, arrive to is something that will be long-term and uh, something that will be secured from the instability of the political somehow system and logic that tomorrow when the political government changes and somebody less uh, attuned to culture and to these kind of models uh, will hold power that they can actually not hurt the institution, that it's uh, uh, for what is worth its stable uh, contract, uh, legally grounded. And then it also means that whatever happens to Yadro, uh, that it's, you know, regardless who is at the helm, that this is actually beyond that. Uh, this is actually one, um, one of the slides, it's an early slide, it's uh, part of the presentation we did in 2015, but it's still, it is the, the slide, the exp it explains the, the logic of how this actually, this partnership should be, look, you know, the, the um, what do you call it, the um, uh, co-organization of the, of the institution will be, will be done. So the founders, uh, the advisory committee, but then also the committee which uh, oversees the, proce the proceedings during the, uh, during the stabilization period, let's say. Uh, then, the, as I said, the um, um, board members, uh, the board and the members, which always come, like one from Yadra, one from the municipality, and one from the from the employees of the institution. And, uh, and then having uh, a director, which in this case will be, will be selected not from the municipality. So the municipality will have no effective role in suggesting somebody who is politically pleasant for them. They will participate in the selection, but they will sit in the committee and they will see who you know, applies for this position. They will be equally somehow standard sitting in a larger committee selecting candidates. Um, so the, the director will work with a program body that will help in the structuring and um, it will have two direct co-workers, one will be a program director and one will be assistant. So Bilan, <laughs> you remember this slide. Um, it's something that uh, we had done and it's still somehow the Yeah, it's somehow still where this is, how it's presented and how it's going to, to work. So I will, should I stop at this time? Yeah, okay. Let's see the, 
And uh, last but not least, uh, the physical space, uh, in all of its modesty, it also should represent, uh, I believe, and I hope my colleagues uh, feel the same, that it should uh, represent where we are, who we are, and what we strive for. So it is modest, but, uh, and it is modest in the terms of what it can produce or how it can produce itself as a space or what it can produce as a content. But uh, it's, it's realistic and, it's, uh, and it is, uh, you know, um, largely a place that we could just continue to define together again the Yadro members and also the, the other, uh, the, the neighbors and all other people who would like to join in the, in the dialogue over it. Um, Yes, so this is the end slide. It's actually, I, I put it at the very end, like the def definition of what is Yadro. We, um, it still remains like for all of its uh, complicated nature somehow that, uh, but in a positive way I say this, it still remains the, the one, um, and only attempt at associating and working together for what is worth on a national level and something that will continue. And I'm very happy that uh, since we've had like the, uh, the, the election meeting uh, in the summer, it has also grown with few new members and it's somehow uh, more members are becoming active uh, and less of them are passive. So it's, it's, it's very positive and this is all kind of the strong and good energy we will need as we move forward and into the next steps of organizing and defining the institution. So thank you very much. This is good for now. Yeah. Thank you, Jana. I would invite you now. Yeah, we, we have time for some two questions. Yeah. Yana, uh, thank you for your presentation. I will have a couple of questions. Um, right, creation examples, Pogon. Um, Pogon is our pride and joy, and, um, but it, I wouldn't suggest for it to be read as a practice that is transversely, it transfers, transversely transferable, right? It is very contextual, not in the sense of practice of the civil public partnership, but in a sense that it sort of signified a shift in Croatian culture policy through a different sort of structural decentralization of the entire culture policy system. Hence, we cannot look at Pogon without looking at the Foundation Cultura Nova, even Croatian Center for Audiovisual Culture, all of these sort of different little steps <clears throat> that were taken in order to um, in the attempt of modernizing our cultural system. So, my first question is, um, how big is the systemic circle in which you're trying to make the change? Um, B, Pogon is not, again, to start with Pogon, Pogon is not the only initiative in Croatia. At the moment, we are working with nine different locations that all nine of them have different organizational structures and different sort of ideas how to realize uh, social culture centers um, in these different cities and different sort of social environments. So my, that's my second question B, your cooperation with different initiatives in Macedonia, because in Macedonia is Copia, even we are here now, because, um, you know, let's face it, nobody can do it alone, not in our context. And um, third, is your actually third, I would, sorry. I would love to answer all of them, but I already forgot the first, so just uh, so one So first, yeah, what, what is your the ambition in a sense, but that's my third, okay. like what okay. is your yeah. ambition, what is your actual ambition? Is yeah. it the social culture center per se, or is it a wider sort of chain of policy change? Mm -hmm. And in that respect, are you having any other sort of um, 
uh, how do I say, battlegrounds open. That's why yes. I mentioned Foundation Cultura Nova, Center for the Film Industry. So you, you understand mm -hmm. me there. Yes. That's one, that's systemic. This is more internal cooperation between existing initiatives for social cultural centers yeah. in Skopje and in Macedonia. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, it's, it's great questions and um, very packed, but this is the, actually the, the true content lies in, the, in these questions and hopefully I will give a, a just good enough answer. Uh, competent answer, I should say. Um, no, the, obviously, the, the ambition, it's not, uh, it's not to have this and stop, you know, it's not just uh, let's do a center, we don't have where to work or what to do, like, no. Uh, absolutely, it's to, it's to uh, complete the process of actually directing change into much of this, you know, much of a structural change, which was almost kind of impossible to, uh, to, to be done without actually having a strong concept around one idea and pursue that to the end to illustrate what you're talking about. So we did understand that this model, if we can succeed in actually establishing, because Yadro does uh, lie on two primary mission goals, is to represent an advocate for the, for the, for the for the scene and uh, work with the work, work with the legislative, let's say, authorities on uh, on uh, you know helping for better condition in all sorts of ways for the independent art scene and re-establishing. We we also we struggled for a long time even explaining what is the independent art scene or what it does and how it's different than other kind of organizations and shadow organizations that were promoted during this time. So. Uh, during this period that we have been doing this the last 10 years, like this, this large period and I now work in the last, let's say, five, five or six years, uh, we, have, uh, we have used this as one thing to, to actually pursue in establishing a ground for a larger you know, initiative for, for, for structural change, which uh, now possibly it's uh, possible because we are now uh, I believe we have uh, a government or ground to be actually understood better and to uh, hold ourselves and, uh, and, the, and our interlocutor more accountable in the dialogue and the discussion for the bigger changes. So it was not just uh, the center per se, but it was important to actually establish and understand. And Pogon, again, yes, it's, it's not something we're married to or we feel like we have been, you know, it's the only, but it is a strong reference that somehow it has stayed from the start only because logistically or legally we, as we were also trying to understand what is the civil public partnership, how it will translate to culture and what it will mean for us. And uh, now that we have Yadro and Yadro was one of the prerequisite to even go into such dialogue because we needed a community, it could not be my organization or your organization alone, it had to be stronger joint, uh, you know, um, body. Um, you know, we, we, we saw it as something that uh, it could look at Pogon, we could be, could be basically understanding, you know, how it translated, how it came from the Croatian context, uh, context and uh, what is the product of, and then understand and apply that in our context. And then the third part is, this is just, uh, we look at it, this is just the start. It was very important to, to uh, win this, this uh, battle somehow. And it was not a battle with an imaginary enemy or, or a specific enemy, it was a battle within ourselves or, or our needs and wants. And, uh, uh, and um, interpretations or whatnot, but it was also with the system and with the legal and logical somehow progression of how uh, administration is operative or not in, you know, in the municipality. So it was, it was something important to win at one place and then see how it can be applied or redistributed in other cities in Macedonia where we do have active members and who have been following closely the process in Skopje. So uh, there's already and preliminary uh, talks and ground built in Bitola, let's say, uh, 
th those are those are also things we have to yet see how it can, you know, how it can and how much the local organizations will participate and want to participate in the process. We have new elections now. Who knows what little change this will bring somehow in the conversation? But um, it was important to complete this process and see how it, this can be applied and to understand, uh, yeah, like how it can be. Um, you know, how, how it can symbolize, because it does symbolize, in our opinion, conceptually, ideologically, a bigger systematic change, but how it will also now, as it exists, also function, how it's going to have like this full formal life. So, I hope I did answer. Okay. On, on who? Uh, oh, okay. So, no. Yeah. I think it's. Yeah. No, I mean, it's very simple. I mean, it's not a complicated, I'm not going to, there is nothing to elaborate. It's a camaraderie, no matter what. I mean, in, we forget, we live in a very uh, disturbingly difficult uh, context. And it's, it's, for me, personally, uh, I find it, for the most part, ridiculous to, to fight or to uh, not uh, see this as a collective uh, success. And yes, there is individual initiatives which uh, I applaud to. I know how hard that must be. I don't know everything or I'm not involved with everything. I know also how my organization struggles, press to exit. And, uh, but, you know, we, we have discussed this like particular interest or collective interest. And again, I think it's, uh, it's true. There is not so many partners. So that's why we have to have structural change so that we do have actually for a long time and or ever, we have not have institutional support for initiatives here. So like uh, foundations, foreign foundations came and left, but there was no good uh, exit strategy of how we will survive without their support or, you know. So, I mean, it's a, I, you know, I, I respect and uh, I appreciate it. And I hope there, there was a collaboration, there was Rift, I'm sure you probably know, since you're asking, um, I, I, I can understand you. You do have some, some of the background, but the thing is we do have to, uh, move forward uh, and support each other and uh, just get back to actually doing the bigger job which is or you know securing a legislative um, uh, position for everybody to thrive and not one or the other you know Um, yeah, thank you also for, for the presentation. I, I will be even more direct. I don't have a question. I just have a kind of comment or a, or a wish to share. Because I have some experience uh, from the beginning of 2000 in Belgrade with um, kind of umbrella organizations. Yes, I'm Dragana from uh, Belgrade and I live in Ljubljana now. We know each other since 10 years. Maybe you don't see me well because of the light. Um, I mean, we know each other. We have been sitting together in lunch and so on. Um, so never mind, I, I, I just want to say I have some kind of experience with this kind of umbrella organization with a kind of uh, uh, gathering the interest or gathering the, the need to fight and so on. And as Selma Banic told me uh, when we were talking, because yesterday I was talking about her, um, they are fighting for this uh, center for contempt, not center, but uh, Zagreb Dance Center. So she told me, Dragan, the only uh, capital that we really have is the capital of our struggle, of our common struggle. We don't know what the politics will be. We don't know what the infrastructures will be. Of course, we all live in, in difficult times. And I think it's very, very tricky and very, um, somehow it calls for much more responsibility. What do we do with this capital somehow? Because, of course, at one point it's a big struggle. At some point it has to uh, narrow down to something. Politicians always want to have one face or one organization. We all know this. 
Mm, we also heard Pascal Gillen, Gillen, I'm sorry that you were not there because he gave a great lecture and one of uh, the things he said is, uh, was about this kind of mirroring of one another at the, in the scene and also censoring one another by this mirroring and also um, controlling one another and so on and so on. It was, it was a great point and I totally agree with it and, and Drog maybe would also say we do some kind of immunization. No, we, we immunize, immunize somehow from each other. I don't want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I, and, uh, I, I tend to think that there is a kind of uh, tendency top-down or orientated or organized from the, let's say, cultural policy towards the terrain, which, which creates these kind of processes. Um, so in fact, I, I, in Ljubljana, we are really fighting mostly with this. What, what, is, what is the direct... Uh, Question, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm arriving okay. to it, yes. <laughs> no, I mean in Ljubljana we are really fighting mainly with this. We are not so much fighting for the spaces because I think anyway there are enough, but exactly with this immunization, atomization, how to overcome this and so on. So my comment or my wish to share is that because I know many people in Skopje, I'm very often in Skopje, is just uh, um, to share that I miss them or I miss you here these days because I feel that what we are talking about is of your concern as well, of, is of common concern somehow as well. So I miss Iskra Geshevska, I miss um, ah, okay. Christina and so on. So you don't even maybe have to answer it. I just wanted you to tell them, because I didn't see them, that I miss them. Okay. Christina is there and Iskra... <laughs> yeah, Christina is here, but uh, I'm here and we're all here. Uh, and uh, the ones who are not here, it's not like for you know, the, not the wanting to be here, or but it's all personal matters, uh, which is, uh, I, I, for example, I just wish Easter all the best. I know she's going through, you know, personal time now. But the thing is, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we have discussed it on openly or, or, or privately, like what happens when I think many things unfold and many concepts unfold and, uh, you know, it does, it's like personal relationships also do suffer, but it's also, uh, I think there is, um, there is, I think, uh, just genuine support and love at the end of the day, I think that doesn't really change, so, but, and, and, you know, I'm glad we're here, and I'm very sorry I missed the lecture, I heard amazing things, but, you know, it's all just like, uh, um, tough at the moment, so. I think we, we make the most of it, but I, again, I'm, you know, I've come, I've been here, I've been maybe less than I wanted to or less than uh, my friends would like me to show up, but I've showed up for things and I'm participating here for the second time in like two months, you know, so I'm very happy. And uh, so, yeah, we all lead like busy, weird lives, so I think shit happens, but it's it's all, I think, for the, for the good. And uh, I hope, uh, that we all survive, like that, you know, collective, big, weird initiatives and, and big, you know, in, more individual dreams, like that, that there is time and space and funding and ideas and resources for everybody. I think nobody here wants to take the space or kick the other one in the, in the knee, you know, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous to, you know, but, but it is, it's, it, it's, you know, it's also our mentality and temperament, I think that maybe gives the impression that. <laughs> okay, I would uh, suggest ending uh, the first part of the session here, have some 10 minutes break and come back for the next uh, three presentations. I would like to thanks again to Adam and Adam and to Jana for their talks and we'll be back here in 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay, so we are continuing with the um, fourth thematic session. Um, which institutions are possible in the context of uh, post-political social crisis and how to overcome the public-private-civil dualism or divide. And uh, we'll have three more presentations. So I would like to ask everyone participating to stick to the time 15 to 20 minutes the most. And we have to be much more uh, concise and strict also with the Q&A uh, part so that we wouldn't eat like a stone cold food for lunch. I would invite first uh, Philip and um, Ivana. 
um, a duo that has been working together for several years now, working on different curatorial and artistic and cultural projects, but also have been involved in organizing festivals, Pop-Up Acto, which uh, kind of uh, got to be established as one of the most important festivals um, in the sphere of independent cultural scene in, in Macedonia in the, in the uh, past years. And they have also been engaged in a lot of projects that involved involving different communities and, um, and um, establishing various initiatives on a local level. So their work has been very important in these processes of cultural decentralization and involving um, uh, uh, communities on, on, on local level, raising important social and political issues for various uh, various uh, various groups. So uh, I wouldn't take any more time. I would invite Filip and Ivana to, to have their presentation. Uh, thank you, Slavja, uh, for the nice introduction, and it's really nice to be here. Um, so I'm going to start with something that I wrote, and then Filip is going to continue with the, with the examples that, and actually the activities that we made in the past few years. Where this uh, elaboration starts is ca some kind of theoretical postulate for it, as well as the activities that will be presented further on, is the research and, and later on the internet uh, version, summarizing the process titled Collective Decision as a Political and Not Organizational Decision, that we got the Ladislav Baricic Award of the Macedonian branch of the IAC Critics Association. No. No. Ah, yeah. And I think that I'm slow, actually. <laughs> I didn't really know. Yeah. In this research, we considered the art groups, that is the groups in the broadest sense of the word, in the area of visual art, where we tried to raise several topics. First, we examined the impact of the political and organizational within the groups from the standpoint of the reasons for their establishing and the problems of artistic organization. The organizational in this research implies it is not always political, because it sometimes exists only as a mutual help among, among the members for their individual production and exhibiting, while the political aspect in establishing a group is examined as an intent to change or affect the change of the circumstances that they are creating under, under in order to create a new climate for production and perception of art, thus creating new relationship and corre uh, correlations. In this sense, we also distinguish between politics and the political. The political is the dimension of, of antagonism, which is constitutive of, so of societies, while politics is a set of practices and institutions creating uh, order which organization or organizes human coexistence in the context of the, co of the conflict enabled by the political. And that is the uh, uh, quote by Chantal Mouffe. In this context, for the presentation, we examine the collective actions which, which strive to make a change in established and most often listless societal, social and cultural context, and by examples that the authors of the research have made by engaging other people. In this sense, we are dealing with collaborative and engaging artistic and curatorial endeavors which speak about the importance of several spaces create, uh, created in the past as spaces for socialization, sociability, subjectivization, as well as an exchange, which do not emphasize the repetition of the old ideas, but reconsider ideas, I mean, ideas of the former Yugoslavia, but reconsiders these models as a stimuli for new models of spaces in arts and culture as a value un and as value units which could serve as an example in the present. In this sense, it is worth mentioning that, uh, here that these projects are also important because, relations they because the relations they, they establish re with regard to the medium and of, and, uh, are of immaterial nature. The medium is collaborative, based on relationship and relationships and, co and correlations, rather than specific productions, which are difficult to document, and in the wor uh, world of art are opposed in themselves, often, often times based without strict parameters. They aim to discover the more complex connect connections of interest for representation and visibility, satisfaction, engagement, and the conventions for social interaction, and that is a quote by Bishop, as well as co uh, conventions and tradition on how to stimulate the political dimension of art in unveiling other relations in the production and reception in contrast, of, in contrast to art's representational character. Consequently, and as my colleague Philip uh, will show you in the course of this presentation, we will present some of the practices shaping broader initiatives, such as the Railway Workers Building in Skopje, built towards the end of the 40s of the previous century by architect Mikhail Dvornikov, as a unique example of collective housing architecture for the employees of the Skopje Directorate for Yugoslavia Railways, 
Kud Textile, space for the textile workers in Stip, as a reminiscence of uh, Kud Makedonka, which functioned from 52 till 91, and an initiative to shelter and protect the officer's house in Bitola, that is protect the building by giving the status of cultural heritage and seek the most adequate model for its functioning and co content, above all artistic content important for the community. All of these uh, activities are part of the, uh, that are part of the presentation are, are, uh, and are part of uh, the presentation due to several reasons. They are heritage of a certain period, the Yugoslavia social and political system, which, which promoted workers' emancipation through culture and art. In this sense, they are an extension to housing, that is, are certain supplements to the household layout, in the case of the cinema theater in the railway, uh, in the railway being, building as a collective space, or an extension of the industrial and ideological self-governing background of industrial development by creating amateur cultural association with the, within the Yugoslavia factories, the textile factory in Stip, and the existence of the cultural and artistic association Makedonka. Within Yugoslavia, there were also photo clubs, li libraries, and literature sections, which enabled avant-garde experimenting in the spirit of social, uh, social self-governance. And that are also tech there are texts also about this from Bojana Pishkur and Stefan, Stefan Majstorovic. To this, we can also add the research of the officer's house in Bitola as the place of a cultural memory of the city, and although it had an elite char character built at the start of the previous century, and du during the Yenea period, it served the army and civil elites and, was, uh, civil elites and was closed for the wider public. And Philip is going to elaborate more about the activities that we made in, the, in this uh, officer's house in Bitola. When it comes to the connection between the self-governing system in Yugoslavia and culture and art, in this context, it would be appropriate to make a parallel to the values that were promoted in the past as opposite the neoliberal logic of the creative industries and the market value of art and culture, which has penetrated not only in the institutions and European culture policies, but, but also through the products, products of the art market with, uh, with its culture of eventfulness and some theater theatralization through various biennials, megalomaniac exhibitions, <coughs> happenings, and new artistic productions. However, uh, even in this logic, there are several strong points of different ideas that give us hope for a different future. Namely, on the issue of how culture could be, could be a political issue within society, or have, cultural pol or have cultural policy be a social fostering of culture, Anton Zvan, within a debate published in 1973 in Cultural Workers magazine, quotes, and that's the, 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 the original title of this magazine, is Kulturni Radnik. First of all, culture in a society, socialist society becomes a real political subject only when the question of the cultural transformation of the people gets in the focus of the issue of politics, and it starts from the Lenin's loud opinion according to which the proletariat is entitled to the highest trends in the human spirit. Socialist cultural policy must, interruptedly, on daily basis and in every practical action, aim at achieving that high ideal. The goal must not and cannot be postponed for the future. It must not be conditioned by anything. Secondly, socialist cultural policy must strive to overcome the historically conditioned gap between the way of life of the oppressed class that has been alienated from the, culture, uh, from the sphere of culture because that class did not, did not possess neither the spare time nor the material conditions and necessar necessary education in order for it to be able to gain for itself the highest cultural values and way of life to the ruling unbusy class whose property and social status enable them access to cultural goods. The proletariat historically, to a certain extent, was largely omitted from part of the cultural life. Socialism must do everything to correct this, his, this historical injustice. And there are also other several conditions that I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip in these presentations. I have to. There are places of socialization, uh, these, all these places that, that uh, we are going to talk about are places of socialization, subject, subjectivization, and emancipation of workers, but there are also places where the issue of responsibility, the issue of the publicity and responsibility of work, especially in the case of the railway building and Kud Makedonka arises, which is social, and by that I mean collective responsibility, which is, which is also in part personal responsibility and a personal responsibility. The issue of responsibility is perhaps one of the issues that are most often the elephant in the room and to which there is no simple answer. But in all three case, it is, cases, it is clear. It is self-aware and motivating. If it is self-aware and motivating, then the community itself would function. And I'm going I'm to I'm quote uh, Vladimir Kosciewicz that also wrote 
on uh, publicity of work and social responsibility, self-governing socialism in this the same in the very same magazine, cultural worker or kulturni radnik. For someone to behave respons responsibly, there must be motivation of or coercion. Personal irresponsibility is considered not to occur, occur only as a lack of uh, legal sanctions, but also due to lack of morals. And moral sanctions do not mean anything to those who are not moral. So it could be said, looking from the point of view of the socialist ethics, that, is irresponsible, that the irresponsible individual is, Im is immoral. As uh, example, here is the railway building, which in my opinion is a perfect example of how collective housing architecture could look, but due to the irresponsibility of many tenants and due to acoustic, acoustics, it has many problems in its functioning. All these three case studies are, are, are left to systematically collapse, are ignored and left to oblivion. The systematic destruction of the cultural heritage of any type due to the market economy, personal business interest, and the interest of private investors, as well as the government, which dramatically changed attitude towards the public, turning, in, turning it into private, and thus suppressing any idea of uh, collective spirit. All these three cases can, can all serve as a basis for rewriting the current housing, housing policy, privacy, individuality, and isolation, of a person in their home or workplace, reducing their sociability, the unexplained privatization circumstances that created the vicious, vicious circle of dissatisfaction and produced the status of permanent employment and lack of care for surrounding for this place where one lives and acts. Some of the principles used for these artistic initiatives were uh, engagement, not participation. In this sense, I would uh, build on some of Mark Smithson's views on participation, that is, the alternative forms of participation and the various interpretations of the concept of democracy in the context of today's world. Adding to the views of Chantal Mouffe, he provocatively named some of his books as The Violence of Participation or In the Nightmare of Participation, stating that participation is often understood as a means of becoming part of something through proactive contribution and occupation of a particular role. However, it seems that this role is rarely understood as a critical platform of engagement, but rather based on romantic conceptions of harmony and solidarity. In this context, I would like to promote an understanding of conflictual participation, one that acts as an uninvited irritant, a forced entry into the fields of knowledge that, that could arguably benefit from spatial thinking. In that sense, and relying on his views on conflict that can lead to change, but also through which the participants become active agents and in which participation becomes critical engagement, is the term that I would prefer to use. In this context, I will also mention Edi Muka, who opened the idea of engagement as a set of specific practices that are called exactly that in order to make a distinction from participation or participatory practices, precisely in terms of the connotation of opening new fields of acting, thinking, and actions. Uh, the other principle is the research, or this is a re these all are research-based projects that set up experiential knowledge, visibility, and dissemination of the issue by, by initiating further projects, ideas, initiatives, and not always specific facts. Furthermore, furthermore, all these studies are not so academically structured, do not constitute scientific research and discourse, but set their own methodology of work in a slightly artistic way. According to Hans Slager, uh, these case studies or this research are not focused on generating expert knowledge, but on the specific expression, expression of experiential knowledge. Such knowledge cannot be channeled through the rigid academic and scientific guidelines of, of generalization, repetition, and quantification, but requir requires full knowledge to the unique, qualitative, particular, and local. Uh, this, uh, ac these, these are all actions or presentation, are presentations in the form of research of the research in form of exhibitions, presentations, artwork, and curatorial practices that open up new ideas of con in contemporary visual art uh, that is rarely initiated in a country and uh, are in turn rarely reflect on due to the lack of knowledge connoisseurs of t our time. With these reactions, this example of a physical object turns in, in it into a symbol of political unification, confrontation of various political subjects. And at the end, I will conclude with, uh, with this. After these initial activities that were initiated last year, by, but are one of Furrow's 
for us strategic commitments and continuation of some of the initiative, initiatives such as living libraries, archives of civil disobedience, the act of festival that turned into a pop-up act and 111 thesis on city trade center and their aim to preserve dissonant spaces by collaborating with the, com with the competent institutions, Ministry of Center, Municipality of Center, Bitola Municipality, Ministry of Culture, and its strategic partner, Locomotiva Center for New Initiatives in, art, in Culture and Art, as well as preparation of an appropriate model for functioning that will lead to, to sustainability and longe longevity. And I finished. Okay, I will be more visual. So, we are going, going to present, as Ivan said, three case studies, starting from our initiative, Acto Festival for Contemporary Art, that we started 12 years ago in Bitola. And um, this year, uh, actually, this is the building of Army House in Bitola, one of the symbols of cultural life in, in the city, uh, which is, in the, five, in the past four years, it's almost totally abandoned. And uh, what is important to mention that uh, three years ago, uh, the local authorities um, initi initiated uh, selling of the building, although it's uh, cultural heritage. And a lot of protests and people from different uh, communities uh, uh, were reacting on this decision of the local authorities. And three days after the announcement, the prime minister at that time, Nikola Gruevsky, um, so Povlech, uh, he, he resigned from this idea, and the, but the, the building uh, was still like uh, one of the symbols of uh, collision of different, different forces, not only party forces, but different communities in the city. Uh, so that's how the object looked seven years ago. This was, was the slogan of the main initiative of citizens, informal activistic initiative, Beetle is not for sale. They were protesting against the selling of the object. Uh, this is performance that we made uh, last year. This is Bruno Isakovic, performer from Croatia. He made performance there that was called Kakva uh, Vlast Takva Architektura. That was the title of the of the performance during the program of Acto Festival. And this year uh, we made, we organized an event called Acto Agora, where we provoke a collision of different forces in the community. We invited a lot of people uh, talking about um, the position and the next steps of uh, Actually, we proposed some models of uh, governance of the building of Fitzerski of Army House. And we invited uh, politicians from both sides, uh, MPs, Minister of Culture was here. So it really provoked a huge interest in the, in the public. This is in the yard of uh, Army House, although we didn't get permission from the local authorities, we, we made the event. The other project, which is very important uh, for our organization and for my work in the past two, two years, is cultural, Art Cultural Center Textile. So it was an artistic curatorial project that we made together with Bilana and Ivana in a small city called Stip, in the eastern part of Macedonia. Uh, cultural center, art center textile is an art and cultural center whose goal is to organize activities in collaboration with Stip citizens towards treatment of topics related, related to the local industry branch textile. So actually my artistic project was to create <coughs> physical space, cultural center for workers, uh, and to give them to, to, to use it after the project uh, was finished. Uh, it uh, directly, the reference wa was the, the amateur associations that, that existed in the factories in Yugoslavia in the 70s and 80s. And one of the most important for local municipality was, uh, was the amateur um, 
club in Makedonka factory. Uh, so, actually what I've done, we, together with one informal initiative of workers in Stip, we found one, one place and we adapted to be like cultural center for them. And I curated two, two big program, including the local community of workers. So actually we designed program for their needs. We organized a lot of workshops, performances, lectures, music program that somehow uh, motivated the local community and then I left the space to the organization Glasno that was the, the most uh, active initiative and still is. These are part of the program for children, some poetry readings. This, how, this was the space. It, was, it used to be uh, a restaurant before and yeah. Yeah, different kind of activities. Put this performance inside. We were attacked after uh, four months of active pro producing active program in the community because the center became very visible and important for the political context in Stip. Uh, because it was, became a real, real place for political organizing of the textile workers there. Okay. The other project, which is our last project, two weeks ago, we, we finished part of it. It was called If Buildings Could Talk. Uh, it is reference to Wim Wenders' movie about the... Uh, reference to Wim Wenders' movie about one educational center in Geneva of uh, Sanaa Architects. It was produced for Biennial of Arch Architecture in 2010. And we used that reference um, for a research-based performance project about one important building in, for us, important in Skopje, uh, building that belonged to railway uh, company in Yugoslavia. This is how it looks. It's like perimeter block with yard inside. And what is very important for this building is inside the building there is a cinema. Inside the building is the, the cinema is designed. And that's how it looks. And now it's totally abandoned. Uh, house called uh, council is using for some activities, but it's not uh, so functional. So we decided to make, to produce an uh, artistic project that will include the local community of the residents, just to give visible, uh, to make it more visible the, the problem of the community itself, of the building, and of the idea of the public spaces, social housing. Uh, for this case study. So these are the three people, residents in the building, with whom we made the research about the building, about the memory of the building. We went apartment to apartment and writing stories and <coughs> researching the history of the building, which was the basis of the scenario that uh, we used it for the performance at the end of the project. So this is the performance that we produced for Young Open Theater Mod. We were part of the additional program of the, of the festival. So we, make, we produced like tour in the building uh, based on the memory of the, of the, of the building. And the, the idea is that we didn't make the performance, the project for the building, but together with the building, together with the residents. So it started from the outside, on the street, and it ends in, the, in, the, in some of the apartments of, of the building. So the relations with the residents uh, was important for, for the project and, for, and it also for our initiative to, to raise the question of the importance of this social housing, like a symbol of uh, modernistic heritage from the end of the 40s. I have to. Mm. Okay. I have some videos, but. Maybe more. We can. I propose. Uh, I propose that we go with. Uh, I don't know, take two questions the most, and then continue with the second presentation by Lolita. 
so I would invite you all to, if you have any questions or you want Philip to elaborate more on you know, some of the projects that he presented. So. No? No, it's not working. We have to go fast now. Okay. If there are no questions or you need some time to process what Ivan and Philip were talking about, I suggest that we then continue with Violeta's presentation and keep your questions or th thoughts for the end when you can also continue the discussion. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Yeah. There are collectives like there are a few collect there are a few collective spaces inside the same building. Like there, the, except for the cinema, there is also a yard, a joint yard for the for the tenants of the building, and also the upper floor, actually the third floor of the building, was the laundry place for for the old inhabitants in the building. So in one point in time, the people were laundering with the time schedule and everything. And after the earth, earthquake in '63. Because, like, because there was a lack of uh, housing in uh, in Skopje, they made it, they turned it in, uh, into apartments. So it's like it was built from forty six till forty nine. Okay, so uh, no need for any introduction to Violeta. You probably all know her very well, <coughs> since she is. Uh, part of uh, Lokomotiva and one of the organizers of, of this event, cultural uh, producer and cultural manager, uh, also part of the PMG uh, collective. So, Vicky. Thank you, Slavta. Um, I'm really like sorry that uh, we have kind of talking about kinokultura at the end and almost half of the people are already gone not to hear the what this space uh, is, how this space is functioning and a little bit about the history. And usually when I'm doing this, I'm very organized and structured, but today I feel a little bit anxious, like uh, Sasha Asantich yesterday said, uh, not, because of, not only because of the time frame, but also because of like uh, many things that were said on this conference uh, really like kind of inspire me and a little bit confuse me and are resonating in my mind. So I would like somehow to, to reflect on and connect with what I wanted to say about uh, Kino Cultura. So um, we've heard here about different kinds of, let's say, models of uh, institutions, the state institution, which uh, as uh, Pascal said in his lecture at the beginning that uh, from the 70s till now are not f uh, performing the functions that they were built on. Then we have uh, now on the very developed big networks of still functioning the same way uh, public uh, or public state owned institutions and the local one, which um, uh, we have some different kinds of um, programming uh, in a way that some of them still are performing this kind of function, reflecting the society, uh, which uh, the main base of their action is uh, focused on the contact, like it was presented by Goran Inac and um, Mladinsko Gledališta. Then we have the big network of houses of cultures, legacy from Yugoslavia time, that have great potentiality inside, and uh, we still don't know how uh, what would be the main model for them to be uh, uh, used uh, and uh, kind of content developed uh, in the future uh, or to which type of ownership or management should be uh, kind of implemented uh, for their functioning. And then we have these uh, different kinds of initiatives taken by the independent cultural actors of representatives of civil society organization. So we are all in a kind of uh, new moment of uh, restructuring uh, the power and money relations in building new public spaces or constituting new form forms of cultural institutions. And my anxious is coming from that like, okay, we want to develop something different, something that it's kind of reflecting the now and the needs of the uh, 
cultural actors, the actors, the scene, the needs of the society, but then uh, it's a kind of danger in a way if this kind of new forms uh, can really take only, can be created a kind of new forms, but still not uh, producing or taking the function of offering something new to the context which is needed. Or like kind of the danger of commodification or in a kind of a conformization of this uh, new form. So I'm saying these words form, form, form because uh, we said this uh, type of word so many times in this question, like how much this form can really influence and how this form becomes something that is uh, something that is um, in, in, in advanced in regards to the content. So we were talking about the forms of policy of uh, EU uh, programs and uh, support, the forms of, uh, as Pascal said, uh, how long should be a one pop song in order to be a successful and many other forms. So I want to start from, okay, now we are offering or developing or discussing or <coughs> regarding or whatever new forms of cultural institutions. So uh, based on uh, representative or participative governing uh, and th these new forms for me should start from really the content, like who we are, what we are doing, what is our mission and uh, how we should continue doing it in the future in order to perform some kind of public function, in order to have right to claim some kind of public space in order to redefine or develop the public sphere. And until when we need to exist in this form in order to perform this public uh, function and be a public space. So this is a kind of question that I need to say because this is something that I was thinking about uh, when I was wake up in this morning. So I will try to connect it with what is Kino Cultura. So Kino Cultura, it's a, sorry, I need to drink a little bit. It's So Kino Kultura, it's a space, okay? It's a building, and the building was built in 1937. And it's building, it was built by two brothers, Kostic brothers, that were this time like city bourgeois, that needed to create some kind of space uh, that uh, will have very <coughs> social role in a way next to the railway station, you know that the people that were uh, passing right to the city or living in the city or staying for some while to have some place to come and to practice some kind of social activities. And it, is, it was good that even at that time these brothers wanted to do this kind of socializing through cultural activities. So they created this uh, building, uh, which at the beginning was called Turani, uh, uh, after that was called Kino Cultura, and it really like they uh, really invested in bringing cameras from Germany, educating people in uh, cinema operators, and really uh, making agreements with these uh, basic distribution companies in order the most re re cinema uh, productions to be able, the Macedonian uh, or uh, Skopje or people passing by to be seen in Kino Cultura. So this was functioning like this as a private property since 1937 until 1945, when uh, in Yugoslavia at time it was this private building was a kind of appropriated by the state, and then it was run uh, not immediately but uh, several years after. Uh, it was run uh, in the frame of state enterprise of, of particular social interest, Gradsky uh, Kina uh, or city cinemas. Uh, this is a kind of interesting or special type of organization that are uh, very, very uh, linked to the self-management system of uh, Yugoslavia at time because it was not a state property. It was not financed at all by the state. It was financed 100% from the ticket sale uh, and it was functioning in a way that it has internal structure of uh, working, workers' council Workers' Council, composed of 24 people, from which 
12 were from internal structure of Gradsky Kina network and 12 were representatives from state institution, media professionals working in the strike sector. I cannot say that this is a kind of participatory governing, but it's a kind of model of self-sustaining and self-management which maintained uh, 18 cinema to be self-sustained and 100 people to be paid for their work uh, in this 18 cinema, including uh, Kino Culture as part of this network. So with the 1990s and um, uh, the dissolution of Gradsky Cinema, I mean, it, start, it continues to, to exist, but it cannot perform anymore its function because it cannot raise that much of money, but still we have uh, reappropriation again or decentralization process where the building is uh, brought to the owners, original owners, or like the two new generations of this costage to brothers. So now this building is belonging to nine people. So each nine people have some kind of share of it. So it's a private property and uh, it's a property of uh, 1,000 and something meters square, which means we have this space, which is uh, Kino Culture initially. Then we have another cinema, small theater uh, upstairs. We have two balconies, the hall, and in the downstairs there is uh, another cinema theater. So this private property for 15 years was staying like this. It was totally devastated uh, and uh, inside and outside the building was uh, destroying because the owners didn't do anything. And then uh, the other part of the story is that Lokomotiva's organization dealing in the sphere of the performing arts in collaboration with theater uh, navigator Svetko, which is uh, a company theater dealing with independent theater production, uh, like since seven years ago, uh, having this condition in a way dealing with performing arts and not having any space to do it, we tried to find some space in order to uh, practice our activities because it was very difficult to collaborate with the institution that they're only one that have space under certain conditions that need to be paid. So a kind of uh, all things get together in 2015 with after so long negotiation, Lokomotiv and Theater Navigator Svetko uh, kind of uh, negotiated with these nine owners to rent under very rental business condition some part of the space around 500 square, which is mean this space in the office only. And then uh, to negotiate it with the municipality of center, the dead time started to be open in order to support initiatives, cultural working in the um, uh, municipality of center. So we got grant from the municipality of center. It's really project based. So we created a, a Kino Culture as a center for contemporary performing arts and contemporary culture. So it's a project based space. It doesn't have an entity and it doesn't have any kind of structural funds that supports its function, which means that now the two managerial, the managerial body, if we can say it, the two organizations, Lokomotiva Teatr and Navigator Cvetko, are all the time in the quest for fundraising in order to maintain the space with all the electricity and all the other stuff rent, but also to do a program inside. So the thing is that uh, after, very shortly after the opening of the space, we kind of um, see that there is a urge from the independent cultural scene that um, they have limited special capacities. We know that from before, but then the people that are dressed us just confirm that, that this space cannot be solely used for our production, that we should really open and try to work out on some kind of models of collaboration that can, uh, from one side, support the maintaining of the space, financial, uh, repairing, uh, program, uh, human capacities that are needed, and from the other part, really like open up and develop different kinds of program content uh, that uh, can be really in the, in the realm of what we think is important, which is really have reflective relation towards society, really open up for the contemporary art and cultural practices, and really discuss and open up with the other organization in the realm or working in the sphere of uh, human rights, gender rights, uh, uh, then uh, children and youth. So we kind of try from this very 
I will say, natural urge to develop some kind of model that can satisfy all these needs. So I can say we develop or we started with some part of the program or with, within one program of the space to develop some or practicing some kind of participatory government, which means we started, okay, we say we have this reality, we have this space, we have this money that co cover more or less the functioning of the space. And within this space, in order to function just to be really factual in numbers, only two people get, uh, uh, are paid, not employed, but are paid, which is our director technical, which is director of theater navigator Svetko, with 350 euros per month, and our colleague Elena, which kind of voluntary based uh, salary, which means we are kind of four or five people really working on the organization and managing of the space for two and a half years, and nobody else is paid. It's like totally voluntary base. So in this space, from the beginning till now, we have 200 different events. So this video, it's kind of made one year ago. So I mean, we are not magicians that five people are doing this 200 events. But in a way, this is possible how? Only with real collaboration between different actors from the scene which means that we kind of managed to create a pool of partners from the local scene with which we really try and succeed to develop the program together, to co-finance the program together, to manage the time of activity happening in Kinokultura together, and really to think strategically in future how we can take more of this space and how in this more of this space we can develop a really participatory governance together that can enable sustainability of this kind of spaces. Until then, until this space is, is performing its main public function, mostly through uh, contemporary arts and cultural practices. So we had these four main programs as we started, uh, okay. And then uh, we kind of develop uh, within the program which we called Open Scene, which is kind of a uh, program uh, dedicated to the collaboration with the independent cultural actors or our partners. We, de we developed some kind of which we called protocol for collaboration with the civil society in the frame of the program Open Scene, which means that uh, we invited different kinds of organization that we collaborated with, together with us, to reflect and develop some kind of participating governing model on one program line. And then when this is tested, to think about furthermore on the whole model of the whole um, uh, public, uh, uh, of the whole space of Kinokultura. And we started also parallelly with this process within this dissonant co-spaces project. And it was really helpful out here, help for our uh, collaboration with Anna Juvela, that together we, I mean, I would not go in these old models because I don't want to speculate. We develop different kinds of uh, ideas how this can happen in the future. I think we should work more on it before I'm presenting it. Now I will present what is real and what is functioning. And this is the protocol or collaboration of civil society in the frame of open scene, which means there is an advisory board of different kinds of organization that follow the program, reflect on the program, tell what they think of the program. There is a partners uh, a board, of, not board, but partner body of organization that together are deciding what kind of program content within this program frame will be um, developed, but also they are taking the word that even is said, and it's very important, responsibility about using the space and uh, developing the space, have an idea of financing and co-using and doing many things, but really together. And then, again, it's open for the broader sector under different conditions, which means, okay, you need to have this reflective idea and program towards society, you're not our partner, but you can use the, this space 
uh, under certain conditions. If you don't have money, you can use it for free. If you have some funds, we develop some kind of, um, how do you say, price list uh, about the usership of the um, space. And in this relation between partners and the others, it's really open, and we want to put it open and dynamic in a way if somebody wants to take the responsibility besides using the program, but really be a partner in this space, it can become a partner by uh, really practicing or collaborating with all the other partners within this program. And at the end, of course, because it's really difficult to sustain as a project big space, we have a part which is called kind of recycled economy, because sometimes it's good to have somebody like uh, to rent it for some kind of event or a concert, but we have a really uh, develop ethical standards what it cannot be done here, like political actions, speech of hate, and different other things, in order to raise some money and to enable this place to function. Okay, we have some kind of strategical idea for future to make some kind of strategic partnership with the municipality of center, with the city of Skopje, and I hope this will work, but I uh, will, be part of it and believe it only until we have this not autonomous as authors, uh, as artists, but autonomous as a kind of partners and manager of this space, not these funds or supporters to intervene or in what we believe this space should function and provide program in order to perform the public space role. So, thank you. Thank you, Violeta, for this uh, little account that you gave of the history and the current situation with uh, Kino Cultura. I would uh, invite you all, if you have one, two questions, we can take the most and then go with the next presentation. So, yeah, Adam. Um, yes, one uh, disagreement with Violetta is that I actually think you are magicians to make this work, you know, seriously. And I'm thinking of it and thinking of uh, uh, similar or if such institutions would exist in Cairo. And you said that uh, it's not that you're magicians, uh, but it's because it takes true collaboration between different actors in the scene for this to work. My question is, w what do you think is the drive that allows these collaborations to work? What are, are their shared needs that make people want to work together and make people want to make things work for the others? What would these needs be? What would these drives be in the scene here? Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is kind of, it, it came naturally from, like if I'm honest and I'm working in the field of contemporary art and culture and I want to do this and this is developmental and this is needed and this is not existing in the official curriculum of the university or as a practice or as a space and I'm doing it because I love it and I'm investing all my knowledge, uh, love, effort to do it. So. I think that our collaborators are doing the same and they are really having this idea of creating some better community of uh, communication, of uh, working, of production. So I think that uh, we kind of, upon these uh, things, we are connecting together. It's a kind of natural link. So like, okay, maybe you're uh, doing more in visual arts, you're doing more in performing arts, somebody's doing more in cultural policy, but we want to create something that will change the conditions of working of the uh, cultural actors in the sphere. So it's a kind of, um, yeah, I mean, I think I answered the question. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for uh, this presentation. I heard for the first time many of these uh, details. Thank you all, I mean all three of you, um, and really congratulations to everyone, to, to Jan and to all, all of you who are doing things in totally crazy conditions. I have a kind of thought because of what you were uh, speaking about is kind of connected to our situation in Ljubljana because as you heard many times these days we are trying to fight for some kind of center for contemporary arts. And it's a big question how to do this, how to really reflect the heterogeneity and the really massive production in Ljubljana within this center, how to not close it within one company or one aesthetic or one 
uh, logic. So for me, what uh, everything is great, really beautiful. For me, what what makes a little bit what uh, scratched my ear a little bit is this kind of there is something secured and there is an open uh, open scene or how did you call it open stage. Um, you have a program line called open scene, as I understood. So maybe I didn't understand well, but it's always my question. Openness for me has to, or, or for, for what I want to fight for, has to be reflected in the logic of the operation. And not one, it cannot be one program line. You know, Maybe I did not understand program well. Line. Program line, yeah. Like in, in what I'm saying, everything is somehow secured, so some people ha can work for sure, and then there is openness for uh, everybody else, or I don't know, this kind of... Uh, and I'm just reflecting. So just, maybe I didn't understand well, so you will tell me. So I just had a proposal, because we were talking a lot about dissonant spaces, or uh, yeah, all these uh, terms. I just, while you were speaking, I had a, an idea that maybe Kinokultura can be a resonant space. <laughs> that there is a kind of resonance between the physical space and the outside of it, or, or even within, like f from within, and what does it mean, and so on. Uh, uh, maybe I didn't uh, explain well about the program. So when we started, we developed four program lines, and it was like theater navigator from independent theater, locomotive program for programs of locomotive, open scene uh, for what I was already explaining a lot, and then the together program, which is kind of for the community. Now it's more active uh, in relation to the children, but we also want to develop for a little third generation of people. So the thing is that as the uh, history of the places, I mean, we were trying to develop a space for performing arts, because this is our basic need and uh, urge. So when we had this space, and this space has very limited physical conditions, we saw it that, uh, okay, first we need to use it for our programming, but also not e exclusively we want to open it for the program of uh, the independent scene, which means when you need to prepare a theater performance, especially independent theater performers, that it can take the time of three months, you know, and everything. So we kind of really try to be really reasonable and taking the real conditions of time, space, money, and everything to have, and really to open a space with collaboration with the other actors in the way that can really happen under these conditions. So, so far in function like this, and we are testing this kind of participatory governing under the program of collaboration with, uh, with the independent cultural sector. But uh, the, our idea is, and there are some kind of initiatives, to really take more of this space and then really to develop a participatory model that it will not have, let's say, exclusivity in a way, but it will function in another way. It's an experiment. We don't have really a kind of knowledge nor uh, experience in doing this. We are like, pra how, how it was that, pra practicing by doing something like that. But yeah, this is it. Thank you. We came. No more time for questions. We have to go to the next presentation. We can. We can use the lunch for further comments because we're really beyond our time <laughs> scheduled. So, yeah, I would now, yeah, I have to do this, otherwise Biliana will kill me afterwards. So, uh, I would now invite uh, Corrado Gemini, a musician, photographer, and uh, activist whose presentation is titled as Parents of Common Ink Ownership and Cultural Production in the Age of Automation. Uh, Corrado will be discussing the problematic and will problematize the distinction between the public-private ownership but also the importance of inventing and developing new models of uh, considering the production and economic models that stand behind it and how it can be, this critical position can be uh, used in rethinking uh, forms of cultural uh, uh, ownership and, and new forms of institutions. So, Corrado, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for resisting till the uh, till now, and thank you for thank you to Biliana and Kino Cultura for uh, inviting me here to talk about what's going on uh, in Italy, and not only. Um, in this talk, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna start with the very bad things, but then I'm gonna like 
climb up to like more happy uh, things. And then I also uh, tell you what is uh, actually going on in Italy. Uh, <laughs> we start with like bad things. This is just a, a um, uh, resume of uh, what's going on in the world now. Like we are totally fucked up. Uh, all the Western civilization is getting poorer and poorer because we are, it's like 15 years that we're, more than 15 years that we're giving money to save banks, like private banks. So everybody is going poor. Uh, labor policies, totally fucked up. Like precariat is like the new general class in which everybody of us is living. Uh, welfare, culture, and research, let's not talk about this because it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> natural resources, natural monuments, and institutions are getting prioritized. Uh, as uh, you were telling before uh, with the army house uh, in uh, Bitola. This, uh, this situation uh, obviously created uh, a big social anger that together with the big failure of all the left governments in the last 100 years led to uh, Nazism, basically, no? So that's what, that's what we are living now, like uh, angry people, far-right populist partisan movements, also not, not only parties are rising everywhere. Uh, migration policies, policies are like crazy. In Italy, we are like making an holocaust. If you have been to Documenta and Castle with Bifo performance was canceled, the performance was, uh, uh, the title of, of the performance was uh, Auschwitz on the beach. And that's what actually is going on in, on the coast of uh, Africa, thanks to our government. Uh, culture is uh, totally without any kind of money, and it's all the money for culture is into the mainstream industries, and uh, the few money that it's not into the main mainstream industries, mainstream industries, it's given to like. Uh, public institutions who use it bad. Uh, growing repression of everything that tries to be different and to build like alternatives, like it was in Greece uh, some years ago, like it's, it, like it's actually going on in uh, Catalonia. Uh, I'm not talking about like independent things, but I'm uh, independent uh, movements, independentists but I'm talking about all the things that are going on in Catalonia since years, like uh, the Barcelona and Comú thing, uh, the Fair Coop uh, movement, the Mondragon, uh, and all these kind of things that are actually being smashed. Whoop. This is where we're going. Because, uh, you know, uh, we couldn't like build uh, an alternative. And now the world is totally owned by uh, tech companies, okay? Oh, there is, uh, I did it with Google Drive and I think that it's, it's not really working with, uh, uh, with like Microsoft Office anyway. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, data, it's the modern oil. We are totally losing it. Every time we click on the telephones, uh, ah, I didn't start my, uh, uh, every time we click on our telephones in Facebook, Google, blah, 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 we are actually producing value for uh, those uh, companies and this value is going to them. We didn't even started thinking that uh, this is actually living work that we do every day. Uh, algorithms and uh, Artificial intelligence that it's like coming very fast is going to change brutally the way we see and the world, the, the, the way we live our lives. Uh, that has to do also with computational power and uh, that it's always going up and up. Uh, we got like the big data centers of Facebook, of uh, the big data centers of Google that are actually like producing things that we cannot even imagine, 
like uh, how much powerful they are. Uh, platform capitalism, it's the big uh, pain in the ass of this uh, actual uh, moment. Uh, we are seeing like uh, Airbnb, uh, Uber, uh, this kind of, like these intermediation platforms that are actually extracting more value from our lives while we keep living and they're like putting to value every like silent asset of our life. Like I, can, I don't use the car today, so someone is, is going to earn money from that because they give me the app so I can use and drive, like work. Uh, policies are non-existent in this platform capitalism world. Uh, for example, uh, the Foodora and Deliveroo uh, thing that with the drivers that are like, they don't, um, they don't even have a contract uh, uh, and they're totally exploited. Uh, the blockchain run. Uh, blockchain uh, was invented like kind of 10 years ago, eight years ago. Uh, a powerful uh, disrupting tool, like the fourth uh, common trust in history after state, money, religion, it's now blockchain. So it's something really powerful, but if you go on the Goldman Sachs website, you will see that Goldman Sachs is actually investing like billions and billions and billions of dollars to uh, just own this technology. Uh, Internet of Things is like pff, uh, going to change and uh, our lives because now you can uh, just order some food by clicking on a button on your fridge. When you finish the axe, you do like tick and Amazon is already shipping them to you. Uh, all of this is, uh, uh, is uh, mm, all of this is creating a big power about knowledge, about data, about capacity to read the future. And uh, so it's about power. So the actual situation is that we are like, uh, dealing with very big powers. And this has nothing to do with culture for now, but we'll see what's, what's going on then. Uh, this is just a mm, little statistic that comes from an Italian uh, uh, newspaper. It's like 2006, uh, the top five uh, companies in the world were the first two were natural resources, the third was uh, Microsoft, hardware and software, and then two banks. Today, it's like five IT companies, Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook. So that's uh, where we're going. This is a funny picture I put here just to, and I, I found it uh, on another conference. Uh, so, this, Situation also creates possibilities, obviously. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's where I'm going with my uh, presentation. More and more people are every day looking for alternatives. Basically, we live in a world that makes us sad and angry. And, uh, and this regards also the mainstream culture. More and more people are getting fed up by these uh, mainstream theater, mainstream music, mainstream uh, movies, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, AI and robotics will kill most of the jobs. In 35 years or something like this, like 60, 70 percent of actual paid jobs in the world, they will exist anymore. So that means there will be a lot of time to think, to do things, to a lot of free time for people. Everybody will be 10 times more poor than now, and probably we will live in matrix in 30 years. But anyway, the automatization of uh, of uh, work is going to free time to the people. And this is another important point we should think about. Uh, platform as new factories to build class consciousness. Uh, platforms who are actually going to dominate the world. If you think them like they are the Mirafiori Fiat uh, from the 70s with uh, and Tony Negri struggling into it, you get uh, uh, an idea of what today can uh, we can do and think about the, this direction that the world is taking, because platform will be everywhere uh, in a few years. Everything is going to be platformized. Everything that can be platformized will be platformized. So we have to, we have to think about the platform as we thought about uh, fiat in the 70s. We have to occupy the platforms. Uh, decentralization and disintermediation technology 
technologies such as, such as blockchain or the same platform we, I, I've talked about, uh, those are powerful tools that we should consider to use uh, while dealing with this uh, situation of uh, uh, rampaging capitalism. Cryptocurrencies also uh, are a powerful tool. Um, well, this is kind of hard uh, um, argument. Uh, <clears throat> actually, cryptocurrencies is, uh, uh, are very bad things because we, we've got Bitcoin and Ethereum, and both of them are uh, like very speculative monies. But the, uh, there are also other examples of technologies of uh, cryptocurrencies. For example, Faircoin, that was, uh, that it's uh, actually very much used uh, in Spain and not only. Uh, that can be uh, good cryptocurrencies, and that means taking back the power over the money, because we need to do this, because the money is not ours. Even if we have it in the pocket, it's not ours, and that's the source of the problem. Now we can get back some power like oh, with owning money, and we have to think about this. Also, there, are, there is some like philosophical problem with blockchain, because uh, even if it's a powerful tool of the decentralization and uh, the intermediation, there is also a philosophical problem with uh, transactionalization of life in some, somehow, no? Because if you start thinking about putting everything on the blockchain, it's like everything in my life will become some kind of transaction. Everything in my life will be uh, kind of tracked, even if it's anonymous, but we have also to think about this uh, philosophical uh, um, uh, problems that comes with also with technology. Uh, I'm, I'm talking a lot about technology, eh? but uh, I am still human and uh, I will be back to humanity uh, later. Uh, mesh networks and mesh computing. Uh, this, this is something else that we should think to use uh, in the future because we haven't got the server farms of Google with these enormous computational powers. Now also the quantum computers are coming there and they will be like millions and millions of times powerful than the actual computers and it's, we're not gonna have them, Google will have. Uh, mesh networks, uh, mesh computing means creating networks uh, of nodes and uh, who share the computational power. So actually uh, with mesh computing, we can have a big computational power that can help us do things that we cannot do. Okay, this is like a bit of um, another point of view over this uh, um, technology, this topic, this topic future that is coming. We also have like uh, some uh, advantage from this uh, situation. Okay. Uh, New, cult new cultural institutions are needed to reshape the whole society. What do I mean with this? I mean that uh, with new cultural institutions, we have to cover every aspect of life. We're not talking of only about culture. Uh, there's no way we can uh, like just be cultural producers uh, and have success in this situation. We have to think uh, about, about humanity. To, uh, a cultural institution goal is to reshape the society, the, the, the way we relate with each other, first of all. And this is important because we live in a society in which also because of those devices, we are getting more and more atomized and less human. And uh, also because we are living in a less and less human society because we kill people and we just, we just don't care, no? And so the, I, I think the first goal of this new cultural institution we are talking about is to find back what is really, uh, what's the real meaning of uh, society. So it's like a relationship between humans. We've, we have to look for it. Uh, artistic, obviously. Social, obviously, economic and political level, because also um, the, um, 
uh, one, one, of, uh, one target of uh, those new cultural institutions we're talking about has to be reshape also the political, uh, mm, the political environment in which we live in, because we're living in the shit, and we have to uh, think about uh, something totally different uh, that can uh, help people be happy, basically. I think while we're talking about new cultural, new cultural institution, we have to talk also, to think also about how to shape a new political organization of the world, okay? And with politics, I don't, I don't mean like a political structure. I mean the way we interact with each other and we make things work. Okay. Um, sorry? Ah, three? Ah, oh, I have to be really fast. So. Okay, from consumer workers to owners, that's the point. We have to own everything because we don't know, we don't own anything today, okay? We have to own everything we can and manage it by ourselves. Steps, global shape, local identity. Uh, we, we have to create something that is global, that, that connects uh, Skopje with Milano, with uh, Bitola, with uh, uh, Athens. We have to think about something that can connect everything, but we have to think also locally and raise the differences. Shared ownerships of means of production, physical and digital. Everything we do has to be shared in the ownership and in the management. Collective decision making and transparency. Data ownership, that's the most important thing. We have to get back our fucking data because otherwise there, no way, there is no way we're gonna overcome those monsters that are growing day by day. Uh, copyleft culture, open source systems. We have to forget about copyright. We have to forget about uh, intellectual property. Intellectual property, as, is, as it, uh, it's meant today, it's a total fraud, okay? Uh, uh, and the first uh, victims of those frauds are the artists, because they believe, oh, my, my album cannot be copied and distributed because you're stealing my music if you copy my album without paying. No, that's total bullshit. It doesn't work like this. We have to forget about copyright and pass to copyleft. Social value instead of market value. Otherwise, if you think only about market value, you can just uh, uh, do, uh, uh, how you call it, a funeral to theater and performing arts because in, they doesn't exist in the market. Uh, a theater production is 10 times, costs 10 times the money that it raises. So we have to think about another kind of value. Now, a hybrid between a public institution and economic it, uh, entity. This, this is what I actually think. If we think about a new cultural institution, we cannot think only about being some kind of political entity, like a party. And we, but we, we have to stay in that thing, and we cannot think to be like a company, but we also have to act like a, a kind of a company in the market. We have to find something that is hybrid, that can be both at the same time. New Nyoshi Mobile, an alternative social philosophy, that's what, what, what I was talking before, collectively owned, managed by the people, no major stakeholders, like one, 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 one. Uh, Human base, love power, cared by everyone, happiness oriented, this is what we are looking in the life. We're not looking to be rich, we're not looking to overcome anybody else, we just have to be happy. So that's a, an important goal. Uh, civil society audience included in governance and ownership, because the civil, uh, civil society, like normal people, the people who come to the theater, they are a part of the chain of the theatrical chain. The people who buys the music, they're part of the musical chain. We have to include them. We have to be everybody together. Okay, uh, Italian situation, just uh, fast, fast, fast. From Teatro Valle to Macao. Teatro Valle, uh, mm, uh, everybody I think mm, knows the story of Teatro Valle, is dead. Uh, but from Teatro to, uh, Valle to Macao, it means that from like uh, 2011, up to today, there was a change in the uh, movement in Italy. Up to 2011, it was like the old style autonomous social center, like we go in the street and we throw stones. From then, uh, we started thinking about, oh, we can do things differently. Uh, 
Anomalia Napoletana is just what is going on in Naples now. They got this mayor of the city that is like very revolutionary, and he made this uh, civic use thing, and they are using it very well, and they are like trying to spread it. Uh, around Italy, because this civic use piece of piece of paper that was made by the Major of Naples uh, is not going to last if he doesn't get elected another time, and, and he will never be elected another time. So they're trying to spread this civic use thing outside Naples to get it uh, stamped into the law, into, into the constitution in some way before it's too late. Uh, common coin and bank of the commons. Common coin is like an internal money they're using in Macau and they're trying to spread it, but uh, it's kind of hard. Bank of the Commons is a project that uh, it's, it's been followed by some people from Macau and from some people from the Fair Cop, like Henry Duran and these kind of uh, uh, guys, and some fr from some uh, people from Holland, from Dine.org, and uh, uh, it's about a common, uh, commonly owned bank with a multi-currency wallet, I will talk about it later. And, and CTRL is uh, something that I will talk about later also. This is, uh, now it's just a fast uh, uh, elenco uh, list of uh, Italian spaces. Uh, this is Exavillo Filangeri di Napoli. I just put those data, like uh, the, when, when they uh, opened the place, what kind of ownership they have, the governance, they got weekly assembly and work groups without vote. Everybody is not voting. I didn't write it here, but it's all about consensus. Uh, the tools, the means of production that they have inside the, the space, and some info. They just want like 50,000 50, euros uh, to make a better rehearsal space, like with this kind of wooden floor, blah, blah, blah. And this culturability presence is a very important presence in Italy for independent culture, and this was a big... Uh, 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 recon reconoscimento for uh, uh, this process that is as Asilo. And they're thinking about a foundation that can finance man many projects. This is Asilo, Boop. this is the rehearsal space, this is party, this is this was, these are the other spaces in Napoli that got the civic use, Villa Medusa, Tito Pola, XOPG, Giardino Liberato, Santa Fe, Scugnizzo Liberato, and Ex Schipa. This is Scugnizzo Liberato, there are big spaces, uh, I mean, big spaces with a lot of things inside. Something is, well, but anyway. Cavallerizza Real in Torino is a space, a uh, huge space, like 44,000 square meters, UNESCO heritage, amazing. And they also going for the civic use with this new administration, with the help from Napoli, they're trying to put it into the law of the city. And they made a 20,000 visitors uh, contemporary art festival. Uh, 20,000 visitors uh, in 10 days, actually, not two years. But, but, no, I don't know why I wrote two years, but it was 10 days. Uh, okay, the picture, are, this is Scavallerizza. Most of the pictures are gone in the change of format. Anyway, this is Macau. Um, Macau is kind of difficult situation because they are selling the place at the moment and they are trying to, uh, first they try to buy the place with a uh, public uh, uh, offering from the people and they wanted to enter this auction for the place together with the Mitzhauser syndicate, My, I think somebody knows it, uh, we can talk about it later if you want, uh, but then this thing just uh, didn't work and now they're like dealing with the city administration in order to get the place for like 30 years. And here comes the big problem because uh, if you take a place like this and you make it legal like this, uh, from tomorrow this place is gonna cost like half a million euro a month just to be run. And that's the big problem about economy. And that's why I think in this moment most of those spaces it's convenient for them to stay occupied until you find a model of a govern economic governance. Teatro Montevergini, it's another space that is running for the civic use. This is the Teatro Montevergini. CTRL is the project I'm working on and it's about building a, a digital platform for this intermediation of uh, arts. We start from the music, but any kind of arts. Uh, this is some information about it. We can talk about it later also if you want during the, the Papa. Bank of the Commons, that's the, what I was talking about before. It's like a collective bank, collectively owned, 
with a multi-currency wallet and blah, blah, blah. And I think this is the real point of everything. It's about uh, this and this. We need economic independence. We need to build our money and we need to use it between our spaces and we need to, to uh, spread it outside the spaces. This is a big struggle we have to fight because uh, if we keep uh, just uh, thinking about getting money from the public, there's no way we're going to change the things. Uh, also, I had some more, I had some more slides, but they're just gone. Uh, another, just last, the last, uh, the last uh, sentence. I think we have to think about new cultural institution as a whole of arts uh, all together. The only way for uh, um, performing arts to be sustainable without being always uh, taken by like political uh, things or just, uh, uh, um, how, you, how you call it, uh, without, without uh, um, being always in troubles like dealing with, I, you give me money, I have to give you something, or something like this. We, this uh, has to be solved between all cultural markets, okay? Uh, there are so many money going on in the musical uh, scene, in the uh, cinema production scene, in the video game production market. All of this money can go and save um, performing against the market that it's actually not sustainable. We have to think about autonomy, uh, economic autonomy. And we, uh, the target is to totally leave uh, the public financiation and to get out from this public and private thing. The, the Asilo Filangeri Napoli with this CVQs thing is trying to do this step because the CVQs just gives the uh, governance of a space to, uh, um, to a community of citizens that it's not actually uh, inscribed into an association or anything, and it's uh, actually creating this third kind of um, goods that are not private, they are not uh, public, but they are common goods. So we have to go in that direction, we, we have to get out from this private public thing. I made quite a mess in my, in my presentation and many slides were missing, but uh, I think I'm okay. Cheers. Thank you, Corello, for the incredible and inspiring presentation. I'm sure that a lot of people have a lot of questions, uh, but I don't know, we can start maybe with a few questions and move with the discussion during, uh, during lunch. So, questions? Liliana? I'm uh, interested specifically uh, about this problem of Macau that you're talking about uh, be, and the ownership of a Macau in this moment and how does it work and I think also to relate with this civic use because I think it's very specific thing that you're doing in Italy so maybe a few words more so we can understand better how that works. So. Macau uh, cannot get into this civic use thing because the building they are squatting at the moment is private. So it's only the uh, only public property that can this, this thing can be done. That's why. And actually, even if the major, if the city of Milan just swap the place between this private owner and the public space, space and does like this. And with the major of Milan in this moment is not really interested in going in that direction. But the next week, exactly, there will be in Leon Cavallo, there is this um, historical squat in Milano, there will be a, a um, meeting and we will have the major of Napoli coming to Leon Cavallo and talking about this civic use thing. We've been officially inviting also Beppe Sala, that is the major of Milan, but he declined. So um, it's actually uh, Macau situation. I don't know how it's going to, um, 
how it's going to be solved. Uh, but anyway, the, um, in this moment, it's really important to support these civic things, uh, this civic use uh, uh, declaration, because after the failure of uh, Teatro Valle uh, Fondazione Bene Comune, uh, this is actually the only uh, like political and administrative weapon we have in hand in Italy in this moment. And if you go and look for civic use uh, declaration, a good part of it is just taken from the statute of uh, Fondazione Teatro Valle Bune. We are like trying to make things up and mm, take forward this struggle uh, about space ownership. But it, it has to be put inside the law, because until now it's just, uh, how you know, uh, you call uh, delibera comunale. It's, it's just something that a city can, yeah, I do this, but it's not really a law. We, we have to do this step to make it a law, because otherwise uh, the next time the measure changes, they just rip it off and it's gone. I assume everyone is very hungry. Okay. I would like to thank you all for the second uh, part of the session and to thank everybody for participating today and being here. Uh, I think that this will be also the end of the uh, conference. Later, that we thank to the people. <laughs> <laughs> no, she started, uh, you know, dreaming. Okay, to close. Um, not to forget now. Oh. Yeah. To have this opening and closure, so to have the end, you can say thanks uh, to the partners, for example. I can say thank you to the partners, for example. <laughs> no, I can say thank you all for being here with us. It meant a lot, and it gave so many different perspectives. I already said that I'm kind of. I will need a week to really uh, handle this information in my head and like direct my future interest and readings and thoughts and models and whatever. So uh, I would like also to thank the people behind the scene that are our partners and collaborators. We didn't mention them. Uh, Pavle Ignovsky, which is the director of Theater Navigator Cvetko, and which is like, if we had uh, here a decent bed, he would probably sleep here. So he's responsible for any kind of technical things going on. Elena Ristaska, which was helping you with the presentations and everything and logistics, so some of you communicated with her. Here is Tino, uh, how is his surname? Who? Tino. Valentino Valent Apostolovsky. Apostolovsky. He is uh, the this right hand. I think I have to uh, think, but anyhow, you can. The right <laughs> Because I have the right name. Ah, okay. So sorry. <laughs> it was not uh, planned before. It was, of course. And uh, yes, uh, the right hand of Pavle, uh, then uh, Vesela uh, Moloska, uh, who was also doing the coordination during the conference. And also, I would like to say uh, thank to Susanna Siljanovska, who is uh, the lady that is following us, I don't know how many years, uh, per, uh, having this level of hygiene uh, in all the spaces that Lokomotiva was going from one to another. So, <laughs> so yeah. let's uh, cut it. Uh, thank you to uh, all the partners uh, in the name of Lokomotiva. So, uh, Luz Associations, Croatia, uh, Jelena Šantić, uh, Faro, Freedom Square, uh, I don't know the translation of the textile workers. Loud textile. Loud textile workers. I had to be loud when I said. And yes, and thank you all of you for participating here. It was really, really, really inspiring and I hope we can continue in some different uh, type of collaboration our work and uh, our next plan is actually to have the publication so I invite you all in uh, to participate with your uh, texts uh, in this uh, presentation and uh, yes that's it it's a wrap and let's have a uh, lunch and uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs>